So just the other day, um, as always, I'm a big fan of Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics, and he made this video series here about this customer that spent $1,000. Again, I'm not talking about that portion of the video, but what I want to talk about is you look here on the screen, there's two codes, a P0420 and a P0430. Although they were not any of the concern in the video, this here is a 2010 Buick LaCrosse and it has a high feature engine in it. Now, I wanna talk about in this video, what type of gas you should be putting in your car and how it might affect your car when it comes to these codes. Now, before I do that, I want to give you my experience just briefly with the high feature engines and tell you exactly where I'm coming from and, I've, and then I'm gonna put you on to how you need to check uh, certain things with your vehicle and the owner's manual and trust me, you're going to enjoy this video if you own, say, a Cadillac, Impala, Buick, um, Malibu, any of those cars that have these 3.6 engines in it, these high-feature engines. I don't care what country you're in. You need to watch this video. All right, so first off, um, I do own a 2010 Buick LaCrosse. Here it is right here. But my car here has a 3.6 liter LLT version. And the video in the, uh, in the car in the Pine Hollow Eye Auto Diagnostics video had the 3.0 liter, not the 3.6 liter, the 3.0 liter with the LF1 version. Now, let's go take a look at this here right quick. Now we go here to, this is a high feature engine page. We're just gonna, just, just to show you um, that, you know, all of, these, all of these engines are within the same family as all I'm trying to show you. This is the LF1 here that was in the video with the Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Uh, this here's the LLT. That um, and again, look at this right here. It says an 87 octane gas. What it says right here, let's watch this. The LLT engine had a compression ratio of 11.3 to 1 and has been certified by the SA to produce 302 horsepower at 6,300 RPMs, yada, 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 at 5,200 and, and 5,200 RPMs on regular unleaded 87 octane gas. Hmm. Hey, let me say that again. Hmm. You'll see what I'm talking about here in just in a second. I also own a 2017 Buick LaCrosse. And also my cousin has a 2014 Cadillac STS. These, these cars basically have the same family of engines, same family powertrain, just different bells and whistles. Again, Cadillac, Malibu, any of these cars. So now I he has an LFX in his um Cadillac, and, and I'll tell you, and that'll come into play in a minute because we, me and him, compare some notes, and you'll see what I'm talking about. And I went and inside of my 2017 Buick LaCrosse, I have the LGX, which is here. So, all I'm trying to establish here is that I have some experience with these high feature engines. So, first of all, what I want to tell you is that these all of these engines, if you're unfamiliar, are direct injection. So if you're not familiar with what direct injection is, look at the image here on the right. So basically, if you look at the fuel injector, it is spraying the fuel below the valve. And the old style engines, which had the port injection, the, the um, fuel injector spraying the gas into the intake port. So therefore, it is, it is washing off or cleaning the valves inside of the old port injection. So just to show you what that potentially will look like, uh, these pictures right here just for illustration. So again, this is both uh, both of these pictures are just from a direct injection. But the point one I want to make is that if you look at the bottom, generally speaking, a port and valve, it may, I ain't gonna say it would necessarily be that clean, but a port injection, uh, because the gas is spraying down on the valve, it's gonna keep it quite clean. But at top, just imagine uh, you got a direct injection you're going to have carbon buildup on those valves because the gasoline is being sprayed beneath it and not above it. All right. So first thing you want to do is use top tier fuel. So if you come here to the uh, top tier gas.com website and you go up here to station finder, click station finder, and I'll put in your zip code or whatever your location. As you can see here, I'm located in Wake County, Central North Carolina. That's going to come into play probably in a minute. You'll see. Um, and up just pops out a gas station that have top tier gas. Okay. So again, first step, recommend using that. All right. Now, back to these codes. 
see this right here p0420 p0430 so let's just imagine you got these codes what's the first thing you do well you check your catalytic converter with a scan tool so i just want to show you what a, if you're not familiar what a good waveform would look like versus a bad so if you look here in um, the blue waveform that says good catalyst we have oscillation like it's going up and down but over here in the yellow it's essentially straight so so again if you was that's sort of zoomed in so if you zoomed out that line was straightened out basically it should be a flat line now bad catalyst if you look here in the green oscillation it's going up and down and if you look at the red oscillation here in the um, sensor two it's going up and down just like the green however in my 2010 Buick LaCrosse. I bought this car in 2019. Now here's the backstory. After I had it for about a month, the check engine light popped on. Okay. Checked it. Had P0420. All right. So I done all the checks. Check with the scan tool. I even checked the temperature of the exhaust before it hit the catalytic converter. Measured the temperature of the catalytic converter and measured the temperature of the exhaust pipes after the catalytic converter. Everything checked out that nothing was wrong with the cat. So I thought maybe it just might be the flu. I turned the check engine light off, drive the car. But the check engine light keeps coming back intermittently. Sometimes it might take a month. I've seen times this check engine light stayed off for like more than a month, like five or six weeks. I've seen times I cut it off. It might come back a week later, might come back two weeks later. Might, and in very rare cases, it would pop back up in just a couple of days. But generally speaking, if you cut it off, it would come back sort of at a random time just some weeks would pass and all of a sudden it will pop back up and again sometime as long as a month or more would just pop up so finally um um i had the uh brilliant idea to read my owner's manual so let's open that up all right because again i was in the garage one day and it had nothing I'm, I'm i'm just bored you know just doing stuff in the garage so i'm in my owner's manual had nothing to do with check engine like i'm just Checking, you know, just 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 for no reason other than this, you know, being in the garage. All right, so let's go to fuel here. Look at where it says, where did that go? Driving, should say fuel somewhere. Uh, right here, fuel. First off, it says use top tier fuel. So I've been, I have always used top tier fuel because where I have lived, it I've always lived like directly near a Shell or BP or Exxon or whatever. So again, I was doing that right. And what I noticed was if you get here with the 3.0 liter, it says use 87 or higher. Don't forget, I have the 3.6 liter. If the vehicle has a 3.6 liter V6 engine, use premium unleaded gas posted with an octane rating of 91 or higher. So what are they talking about with the um if you go back here to the um, wikipedia page they said here in the lot take a look at this again this is how information gets disseminated it's wrong they use 87 octane so basically if somebody read this they would assume for the 3.6 liter that 87 is the correct gas but is in fact not so i ran my gas out you know down to the light gas light came on put 93 gas in it and i've been putting premium in this car ever since about i don't know 2020 2021 never seen the check engine light for that p0420 come up again okay so what do i think is happening here but first let me tell you uh well i'm going to tell you what i think is happening what i think is happening here is that i think that the premium gas obviously gives a more the, the detonation inside the chamber is more optimized for the piston rings to allow less blowback to get by. Okay, and so because you got a direct injection, you're going to have a little bit of fuel dilution there. So, um, a little bit of gas is going to be mixing with our oil as well. So that's probably what's causing this catalytic efficiency code in the 3.0 is that depending on the location they're at, depending on the altitude they're at, depending on maybe the 87 gas could be 85. Maybe they're using um, something with ethanol that has, you know, gas that has more ethanol content than they're saying. So basically, based on my experience, and I'll tell you something else in a minute here, is that these cars, I don't care that if it's a GM high feature engine, they 
do not need to use 87. They need 89 or higher, in my opinion. Now, let's go to the next page here. Now, under the California crime is basically, if you know, we're, you can read, pause the video and read all this, but the whole point, what I want to get to is that California emissions, the vehicle will operate satisfactorily on all uh, fuels meeting spe federal specification, but emission control performance might be affected. The malfunction um, light could turn on and, and the vehicle might fail a small check test. Okay. So that's what happened here uh, with this, uh, with the Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics car here, is that I believe that this car just needs to have, I'm pretty sure anybody, because who would think a Buick would need anything other than 87 gas? Nobody would. This car needs at least 89 gas in it. And let me tell you what else. Okay, so I also have a 2017 Buick LaCrosse. And, 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 and one last thing I tell you really quick is that my cousin also has a 2014 Cadillac CSS. So basically, you know, they all have a high feature engine in it. So what has happened with these cars? Well, not much. This car here, I noticed that um, if you go back here to the book, I got the owner's manual for the 2017 as well. Let's go down to fuel and go to here use top 10 it says here it specifically talks about gas with ethanol levels greater than 15 percent don't use them however again you don't really know how much ethanol is in gas that you're getting i know what they might say at the pump but you don't really know so and up here it does say use octane rating of 87 in this car but however based on my opinion my car my gas uh I mean, my fuel economy went up with this car. It was only one of a few tents, but it went up when I started using 93 gas in this car. Um, additionally, um, the car pulls off a lot smoother. And I know, and for me, I feel like it idles slightly better. So again, although this car here says put 87 in it in my 2017 Brutal Lacrosse, my feeling, again, this is not based on anything other than, you know, just how it feels when it pulls off and how it idles that 87 is not good for this car. And come down here to this caution uh, block here and look at the last one. Fuel with a posted octane rating of less than the recommended fuel. Um, using this fuel will lower fuel economy and performance and may decrease the life of the emission catalyst. Again, just because this, this book says 87, you don't know what a gas tank may have in it, not gas pump, right? So I'd recommend putting 89 at minimum octane. And I know a lot of people think about money and I get it. I'm not, I'm, I'm not, you know, I, I, but again, you think about your car and the annoyance that you have to go through and having to go to this shop, get a check engine light check and somebody trying to maybe even say you something that you don't need. It is totally worth just spending the extra, you know, 15, 20 cents a gallon to step up to minimum 89 octane. Another thing you need to do with these cars, in my opinion, is change with these, well, not cars, but these with these high feature engines is change the oil at every 3,000 miles. And some people might think that is overkill, but I don't think so because of, again, the the, but this, this, the little bit of oil dilution and the blow out of these engines are going to get, you want nice, clean oil that is able to hold, you know, able to go through clearances like it should and have less of a chance to be, you know, blown by the piston rings. So every 3,000, I just go 3,000 plus, maybe 3,300 miles. I change the oil in both of my Buicks or six months. Trust me, if you baby these cars, with oil changes like that and put at minimum 89 octane these cars, these cars run like champs. And again, you have an Impala, Malibu, um, or any other in car that, that you saw on the GM list that has um these um types of um high feature engines in them. So we go back here to so you just come to this the high feature Wikipedia right here. And you could just look down and, and find your car. All sorts of cars have them in, but I would I'm I'm mainly talking about more of the newer cars when i say newer cars i'm gonna say 2010 and and newer but again if you got a sob anything from the early 2000s but again a chevy cap chevrolet captiva gm gmc terrain equinox you need in my opinion to be not 
putting 87 gas in these cars, no matter what the book says. Because, because, because again, if you look at my Buick LaCrosse, the, the, uh, my 2010 for the 3.6 version, I will bet money. It is so many people out here putting 87 octane gas in that 3.6, 3.6 liter engine that, and they just don't know. They probably need to read that book. So anyway, I hope y'all got something out of this. I hope this was informative. Check your owner's manual. You know, listen to your car. It's like saying, listen to your body. If something ain't right, you know, check it out. Baby, these high feature engines put top tier gas in them. Put anything other than 87 octane is higher and change the oil every 3,000, 3,500 miles. And I will guarantee you that your car will treat you like it should.